Hi Champions, I am Chandan Biswas and in this video we are going to learn about Bohr's atomic model. Now before we start this model we have to keep one thing in mind that this model is applicable only to those species which contain only single electron. For example we can have hydrogen atom, we can have He+, we can have Li2+, B3+, B3+, and so on. So only these species, why? Because they contain exactly one electron. So what are the main points related to the Bohr's, Bohr's theory? So the first point is says that point number one, the electrons of any atom revolve around any orbit and those orbits contain a fixed amount of energy and a fixed radius and they continuously revolve around that orbit which is basically surrounding the nucleus which is pretty much similar to the planetary model of our solar system. Right? The next point is that as long as the electron revolves around that orbit, it neither loses energy, neither gains energy, which means that it will have the exact same amount of energy, which is the energy of that particular orbit. The next point is that electron revolves around only those orbits for which the angular momentum is totally quantized, or in other words, we can say it is a multiple of h by 2 pi so h by 2 pi is the angular momentum and for any orbit any circular object which is revolving in a circular path the angular momentum can be written as mvr so we have to write nvr equal to h by 2 pi into n why n because this n can be any natural number 1 2 3 2 infinity it can be anything the next point is that any electron can release or absorb energy only when it jumps from one orbit to another which means that if, if it jumps from a lower orbit which is lesser in n value to any higher orbit it will absorb energy and if it jumps from a higher orbit to a lower orbit it will release energy why because the energy differences of these two orbits will be released as the irradiating part of that atom and mostly those radiations are in the form of electromagnetic radiation so let's say the difference in energy to energy levels is delta e so this delta e will be released as a electromagnetic radiation of wavelength lambda so we can write delta E equals Hc upon lambda so for each radiation we have a single transition so that's what we have to keep in mind let's talk quickly about some mathematical formulae of Bohr's theory the first one in the list is Bohr's radius so Bohr's radius is taken as Rn Rn is the radius of nth orbit this Rn will be equal to 0.529 into n square upon z angstrom where n is the orbit number and z is the atomic number. So all the atoms of entire C single electron species can be included in this formula. So this is an important formula to calculate the Bohr's radius of any given atom. In other words, we can also see that r becomes proportional to n square, which means as n increases, the r will also increase and r will be inversely proportional to z, which means if atomic number increases, the size of the radius of the same orbit decreases. Next mathematical formula is Bohr's velocity. Bohr's velocity is given as Vn, which is equal to 2.16 into 10 s to minus 10 s to 6 into z upon n meter per second. So as we can see that this is almost 137th speed of light, this constant of uh, Vn. So we can see that V will be proportional to z while inversely proportional to n. Next up is the time period of revolution of electron that is given as Tn. Tn can be written as 2 pi Rn upon Vn where Rn is the radius of that orbit and Vn is the velocity of the electron in that particular orbit. And next up is the frequency of revolution which is basically the inverse of the time period because frequency of nth orbit will be inverse of 1 by Tn so it will be written as Vn upon 2 pi Rn. And lastly we have Bohr's energy En that is given as in two forms one in electron volts and second one in joules the first formula is en equals to minus 13.6 into z square upon n square where z is the atomic number n is the orbit number this formula will be used only to calculate the energy in electron volts suppose if you want to electron volts instead of electron volts you want to calculate it in joules for per se so the answer will be en will be 2.18 into 10 to minus 18 into z square upon n square in joules. So that's all about Bohr's theory. I'll see you in the next one.